it's me, Rachel, also known as Dr. Ray Rivers. And I want to welcome you to my GoFundMe. And I want to thank you all just for taking out the time out to read about my cause and the organization that I am starting, the Embrace Women's Foundation. So before I tell you more about the purpose of the organization, I have to give you all a little bit of, sto of the story about me and how I came to uh, where I am today with the purpose of my organization. The purpose of the organization is to help women and young women. That's where my heart and my passion lies. And um, I'm trying to make this so professional. Let me just be myself. <laughs> Basically, I've been back, I moved back to my hometown of St. Louis. This is where I really wanted to be, wanted to be closer to my mom, to my family, because I lived away for so long. Um, I attended undergraduate in Oklahoma, and then I went to graduate school also at Langston University in Oklahoma, and then I went over to the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. And these are all great accomplishments that I'm very proud of to this day. But when I moved back home in the summer of 2011, that was three years ago, um, it's just been a major, major struggle. And I just keep asking God, why? Why me? But the Lord is saying, why not you? And I know that I'm not alone in my story. I'm not the only person who has been through something like this. Um, you know, just continuously looking for a nice paying job, a decent paying job, I feel like that's not too much to ask for. Uh, you know, 30000 40000 that's not much money, but it's better than minimum wage. And I just feel as though I'm entitled to, to a job that's going to help me begin to start paying back my student loans, using my gifts and talents and the things um, that I studied in school. However, I'm coming to realize and know that the purpose of obtaining those degrees was not to get a job. And I keep telling myself, I'm too smart, too beautiful, and too intelligent, and too creative not to come up with something, some type of a business or an organization that is going to create a job for myself, be able to give back to my community, and also employ others. That is the purpose of education, to learn the things that we need to learn to help us in, in, um, implement them to create a better life, life for ourselves and our families. So while I was in graduate school, I continued to do writing, which I've been doing since childhood. I always wanted to write a book. That was one of my dreams. And I was able to do that um, by, by self-publishing through a company called Author House. I'm very proud of this accomplishment. Some, some days I feel as though I'm even more proud of, you know, putting a book into print than I am of um, obtaining my college degrees because school was always easy for me. It, was, it may not have been easy for you or some of the other people that are listening to this, but it, it was easy for me. Um, but once you get to the level of working on a PhD, they're not just going to hand it to you. There are many things that you have to do. And I had some challenges in my efforts to uh, seek out a PhD. I hated statistics. I'm one of those students, I don't like to study. I wasn't a very good student. Smart, but not a very good student. You can ask any of my professors. You can ask uh, Dr. Alex Lewis over at Langston University. He would say, you are smart, but you are lazy. That's, that's not a good reputation to have. <clears throat> but. I feel like, you know, I'm one of those uh, students, you know, even as a child, I was kind of I maybe a rebel when it came to school. I'm on my own time. I'm just like that in life. I'm on my own schedule. I know it frustrates a lot of people, you know, because in society you have to know how to conform, conform to the clock and the time and getting a job, a nine to five. And, you know, a lot of days I'm like, I'm, I'm praying to be normal. You know, God, why did you make me like this? You know, I want to be able to conform. But sometimes conforming is not what's going to get you into that elite 
one percent of the society uh, people who, who are building and maintaining the wealth so this is why I'm here today um, so when I came back home I went I've been on a hundred interviews I've been LinkedIn I've had connections with the people that work at the universities and um, you know that and these are for the jobs that I've, I've been interested in, you know, working in uh, student services, assisting students, helping students. That's what I want to do. That's what my heart is. I worked in higher education. And everyone's like, well, maybe you need to look outside of education, but why should I have to do that? You know, when, you know, God knows my heart and what I want to do. Meanwhile, there's still the, those secrets and uh, purposes you know, things, desires that God has placed within me, as um, I stated in my book, my purpose is going to be, is, is to help women and young women. So that's why I'm creating this organization. So saying all this to say, <laughs> wow, this story is, is really getting long, and I'm probably going to have to re-record this, but because um, I have so much I want to tell you all just from the whole beginning of the story. So in Arkansas, I was unable to finish my PhD. December of 2010, my advisory committee told me that I, I did not pass my comprehensive exam, which was the, the written exam. And that was like the most devastating day of my life. One of the most, not the only, but one of the key you know, pitfalls and downfalls that I can remember um, in my life. And I feel like I've been holding on to that for almost four years now. It's like the ultimate rejection. <clears throat> you lose your confidence when things like that happen. But from that, you have to rebuild your life. And so I had already purchased the publishing package for the book, which was in the works, which didn't release until after I already, already moved back uh, to St. Louis that summer of 2011. So once again, there was another high in my life. I had my book signing. I had the support of my family and friends. I was running around St. Louis promoting the book. It's, it's like the greatest feeling in the, in the world. So I went from an extreme low in the winter of 2010 to an extreme high. You know, I graduated with my educational specialist degree. Thank God I was able to complete with something from University of Arkansas so that all of those courses and classes and money was not in vain. Um, and then my book released the summer of 2011, so I'm on an extreme high. But yet again, I was continuing to go on job interviews for jobs that I knew I was qualified for, and I kept getting these rejection letters. Oh, you were in the top two. Oh, you're in the top three. Oh, we're going to do a second interview. And so it was just, I'm trying to understand why, Lord. You know, I was living with my parents at the time, and um, I, didn't, I, I didn't, I only thought I would be with them maybe three months, so I thought I was going to move back home get a decent job, get a new car, you know, move out. But it just, it hasn't happened that way in these three years. So I just keep saying, okay, God, what is it that you want me to do? I'm ready to write my next book. Needs to get that done. <laughs> because writing is a gift that God gave me. So I should be using that gift and getting paid for that gift. So... To bring us up to date to today, in last March, I moved out of my parents' house. I was with them for a year and a half. Uh, 